recently I had a check engine light on my uh, uh, car it's an Audi B8 uh, 2015 facelift and uh, I think I know what it is it's a NOS sensor uh, issue what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you uh, the codes first the error code and then what we'll do is before I go and uh, before an electrical malfunction as the P2200 NOS sensor bank one and then this one so we have the P2209 um, I'm gonna try to clean the sensor and see if uh, that will fix it yes we will clear the code uh, clear faulty code yes that's done close the controller close it exit and we'll move to the car now so here is a sensor uh, this is the sensor that we need to uh, take out it's a 22 millimeter wrench i think and that the wire runs all the way to the nos sensor which sits right there i've checked all the connections on the nos sensor everything looks fine so far so uh, I'm gonna try to clean the sensor. I'm gonna take it out and I'll show you how to clean it. I'll use a little bit of a WD-40 uh, because I suspect this one is gonna be uh, this one is gonna be stuck. So uh, I'll apply a little bit, just small amount. So what I'll have to do apparently is take this sensor out, but it's on my way to take uh, to take the NOS sensor out. This one is already unscrewed, I just have to run the wire, it goes all the way down here. I have to disconnect this so it doesn't break the wire when I'm turning. Well, very important thing is protect the wire. So while you're screwing, while you're uh, screwing the, the sensor into the catalytic converter, make sure to turn the same direction the cable so it's not twisted, okay? I finally managed to uh, unscrew this one with a little WD-40. I had to twist this one. You can see I, I I unscrewed just enough so you can twist. You gotta wear gloves because there's a lot of sharp edges here. And once once you put a lot of pressure and the thing just snaps out, you you are asking for yourself for a, a cut. So the thing is, that's the position to to take it from. And uh, you can see it's uh, now moving. So I'll take it out. I'll show you what it looks like uh, before I clean it. And we'll go from there. Again, I have to disconnect all this here. And here. And here. And just keep going. Keep going down the route. Until you take the NOS sensor out. So you can unscrew this uh, without breaking the wire. For the NOS sensor to take it out, uh, there is a clip here. Just push. And, and pull. There we go. And now you have uh, this one here, you just have to press it and take the sensor out. There you go. Well, there you go. So that's my sensor, you can see it is the J revision. Yep, and you have to take and clamp it here and clamp it there. And there you go. Now I just have to unscrew it from here. Okay. I'll take it out and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. So here is what it looks like. Uh, it's quite dirty, I can tell. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, you see some of the holes are even, I think, even closed. So what I'll do is I'll use, uh, again, additive to put it into, uh, to put this thing into. Uh, I'll put it only up to here the thread actually up to here I don't want the rest messed up um, it's an additive that you put into your fuel system for cleaning the uh, the valves so the goal is to clean this and inside uh, to clean it and then I'll spray it with a carburetor spray which again should clean uh, a lot of this so the next step now is to put this diesel injector cleaner which I assume will clean the same thing as the injectors you know those, those burnouts off the sensor 
I'm not quite sure how long it should stay. But this should be a strong thing since you put one thing per um, uh, per a whole tank and it's supposed to clean uh, your uh, injectors and stuff like that. So take a, a glass, it must be a glass. Don't, don't want to risk, uh, whatever additive you're using, don't want to risk uh, using a plastic container. So what I'll do is I'll put uh, this and up to the 100 grams mark maybe even the 50 so it's yeah, 75 actually to be precise so it's up to the thread i don't want it above uh it's just, it's just gonna be a waste so and then i'll soak it the way i'll position it i'll use this this toilet part and what i'll do is i'll put this this thing down here and i'll clamp like that and like that so it stays straight so it stays straight. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, and I'll leave it and I'll, I'll monitor it from time to time. But I know with, uh, I know on, on, on the net, people were talking about using, uh, using uh, petrol, gasoline, and leave it soaking for eight hours. I'm not sure if this is not much stronger and I don't want it to, the sensor to become even worse than it is uh, so yeah I'll monitor it from time to time see how it how it degrades the all the ash around the sensor and inside and after that I will go and uh, spray it with uh, with this see the carburetor cleaner it has a nozzle nozzle so I'll use this to spray uh, spray the, uh, the sensor Okay, well, I'll do it and I'll let you know how it goes. Well, that thing is actually very strong. You can see immediately the difference. Um, I'll let it soak though. I'll let it soak into, into, this, into this thing for much longer. Don't get confused about the color. The color was like that, so it's, uh, it's not like it was very clean and now I can see what the dirt is. Uh, you can see the difference it's uh, much cleaner now I can see the holes so yeah, I'm just knocking it a little bit you know just making a little bit of movement I use my toothbrush well not mine but I use a toothbrush <laughs> uh, to to clean it up a little bit uh, but yeah I'll, I'll leave it at least for 30 minutes and uh, I'll come back. Actually, what I'll do now is uh, it's been like uh, two, three minutes, four or five maybe. That thing has been sitting in there. What I thought about is uh, I don't know for sure if those small holes are unclogged or clogged. So I'll use the carburetor cleaner to spray into them and then put it back into that liquid. And it wouldn't hurt to get a small needle, a very tiny one, just to make sure you can go through those holes so the, the sensor can you know, do its thing. Okay, so I'm using now the carburetor cleaner. Just spray into those holes. And I'll continue rotating it and doing the same thing. So it has been three hours since we started this procedure. Looks clean. Looks very clean. I'm focusing properly. Yeah, it looks clean. So now what I'll what I'll do is, I'm going to use a needle just to go through the holes one by one and uh, make sure they are uh, all good. Okay, so all the holes are clean. What I'm going to do next is spray with uh, the, um, the carburetor, carburetor cleaner, just to make sure nothing is inside. And I will dry it out and install it back into the car, see what happens. The sensor is clean now. I can actually see through the holes because those are kind of symmetrical, the, the holes on the bottom where you saw I put the pin through it. Um, so yeah, it's about time to put it back in and uh, see what's what. Yeah. Okay. So make sure once you install the sensor, then you start doing the wiring. So this is done. Now we need to put back the lambda sum. 
lambda sensor uh, again I'm gonna uh, put my video my phone down make sure you connect this one we, we connected it from here that sensor the lambda sensor needs to connect here and goes on that holder and this one we had to untie it so I'm gonna have to tie it back again that's a temperature sensor everything has been installed uh, the cables needs to go through those uh, routings the clip for the lambda lambda sensor is also installed uh, I have my chip installed so everything is tight so it's uh, time for me to test it for a little bit and I will let you know in the video if that actually fixed it or not also one thing I've noticed is those I think those needs to go over so they can protect the wires these were all out and the wires were visible and hanging see how the lambda is it's all covered and, and nicely protected so make sure you you tuck those in like that look at this sensor also it's... another thing I want to show is the carbon or the ash that's uh, in the after I threw the liquid, I can clearly see a lot of it came out of the sensor. So yeah, definitely, definitely the sensor is clean. Hopefully it's working fine. I still haven't tested, so once I do a short trip, I should tell me. Normally, um, what happens is it will take about uh, 20, 30 minutes for the for the sensor to react and give me an error code. So. Today I have a short trip, so I'll let you know how that goes. Unfortunately, the errors came back, even though it took way much longer to come back. Uh, normally after the car warms up, the errors were present and the check engine line light was present on the dashboard. It took almost an hour for them to, to show up and I was probably... I, I drove for 40-50 uh, kilometers before they showed up. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a second attempt, uh, leaving them overnight, both sensors, the Lambda and the NOx, and see if that will help. The Lambda or the oxygen sensor, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pop it in and clean that, that one too. So we'll see what happens tomorrow. I have to dry it out and test it again. Now I have my two sensors sitting overnight. Uh, I already dried them out. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna put them one by one into the car and uh, go from there, see what, what happens. Trying to help the issue, I tried to do, to force the car to regenerate. Uh, so you see it real quick. It went through, but unfortunately the errors comes back again and again. So. Cleaning in this case did not help. It's more likely an electrical issue that uh, needs to be repaired or maybe the NOx sensor needs to be changed. Well, after cleaning it two times, uh, apparently the problem was with the heater inside the, <coughs> the sensor itself. Right there, there is a heater element. And uh, I had to replace the part. Uh, the part is very expensive if you go to Audi dealership. But what I did is actually I found it locally for 40 bucks uh, second hand it was a newer version mine is 0015 the other one was 0016 and it was made uh, 7 of uh, 2017 so it was a much newer version than this one maybe the next one uh, it came out of a 2.0 TDI Audi um, sedan so yep hopefully Everything will be fine from this point on. I don't have the error anymore. Um, that's it. Thank you very much for watching.